Welcome to Sotheby's November sale of important Australian and international art. We are particularly honoured in this sale to have consigned works from the estate of the late Irvin Rockman, CBE, former Mayor of Melbourne and distinguished art supporter and collector. We have eight works from the Rockman estate, including the quite remarkable magisterial late Drysdale portrait, Gran, as well as paintings by William Dobell, John Glover, and Norman Lindsay. Russell Drysdale's images of stockmen and other rural workers are archetypes amongst the most popular works in his oeuvre and indeed in the history of 20th century Australian art. But as even those blokes would say themselves, let's not forget the women folk. Drysdale was equally adept at painting women, the hard-working, hard-worn women of the Australian frontier. Women like the gatekeeper's wife, the drover's wife, Maria, the mourner, and here, towards the end of her life, the remarkable figure of Gran. The sale includes three major works by the great expatriate cubist Roy de Maistre. Perhaps the most interesting of these is the painting entitled La Folie, Madness, a work which was developed from a photograph of de Maistre's cousin, which he found in the bombed out ruins of a London house. Now, de Maistre was good friends with the writer Patrick White, and White bought an earlier version of this work at the end of World War II. That picture is now in the Art Gallery of New South Wales. White was very much influenced by the work in developing the character of Theodora Goodman, the rather dotty protagonist of his novel, The Aunt's Story. And in fact, the picture was used as the cover for the first edition of the book. The influence then bounced back and de Maistre produced this second version, a stunning image of a world and a psyche shattered by war and a handsome tribute to the interaction of modernist art and literature. Olsen loves the elemental power of water as his paintings of Sydney Harbour, of the Murray River, and especially of the flooded Lake Eyre so clearly demonstrate. Here he gives us a kind of abstracted aerial view of the Kakadu floodplain, dotted with palm trees and lily pads with water birds and frogs and insects. And these free, joyous, calligraphic figures are like the intestinal flora of some vast topographical gut. The great yellow, green, greasy South Alligator River swoops swellingly from top to bottom of the picture, bringing life and colour to the canvas and to the land. An important painting by Rupert Bunny, Woman with Rose was first exhibited in Paris at the New Salon and was for many years held in the collection of the Queensland Art Gallery. It's a most intriguing painting, at once typically Bunny, but with characteristics particularly its own. It is a picture which breaks with the artist's earlier symbolist pre-Raphaelite confections, all those tritons and fauns and angels of the 1890s. It adopts instead the contemporary grand manner salon impressionism that we associate with the New English Art Club, with John Singer Sargent, George Clausen, and that other great Australian expatriate, George Lambert. Between the grim, spiky existentialism of Collin Street 5pm and the bar, and the lurid, unerotic nudes of the late 1950s, John Brack produced a quite remarkable series of watercolours and etchings on the subject of horse racing, a series which he first exhibited in Melbourne in 1956. Probably inspired by Manet's and Degas' paintings of racecourses, possibly in reaction to the sports madness of Melbourne's Olympic year, these tight graphic images of trainers and owners, of jockeys and punters, and of course of the horses themselves, show that the pleasures of the turf are every bit as regimented and disciplined as the nine to five or the six o'clock swill. The late Howard Arkley grew up in Melbourne's eastern suburbs and he has become those suburbs' great celebrant, their great poet, their great advocate. 
his paintings from the early 1980s applied the airbrush technique and the keen sensitivity to pattern of his earlier work to the realities of most Australians' lives. The 1988 Houses and Homes exhibition brought these pictures to full attention and it was the Houses and Homes that were so much celebrated in his presence at the Venice Biennale. My chairman, Geoffrey Smith, and my other colleagues here at Sotheby's look forward to sharing these treasures with you and to seeing you at our previews in Sydney and in Melbourne.